Graphing is one of the coolest and most useful parts of mathematics. In this video, we'll go over the basics of using a coordinate plane. The person known for incorporating a coordinate plane into mathematics is Rene Descartes. Rather than tell you all about him, you should just go Google him, look him up, but he is known for the quote, I think, therefore I am. So that's enough for you to be interested in looking up what he's all about, but let's get back to the details of this coordinate plane. It's really made up of one horizontal line called an axis, and it's often called the x-axis. This axis is a number line that extends infinity to the left and to the right. In the middle would be the number zero, and as we move to the right, we would increase to one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it's a line that we can use to represent numbers. How far to the right are we moving for a positive number? And we can use the left for negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. In addition to the horizontal axis, we have a vertical axis, and it's often called the y-axis. This is another number line where our positive numbers go up, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and negative numbers would go down on the y-axis. So this one's kind of like a thermometer, the way we see numbers increase going up, decrease going down. And the horizontal axis is like the number line we're used to using, negative numbers to the left and positive numbers to the right. We want to see that this coordinate plane is now divided up into four sections that we call quadrants. The quadrants are labeled with Roman numerals between 1 and 4. Quadrant 1 is in the top right, and then it goes counterclockwise direction. Quadrant 2, 3, and 4. The top right is considered to be quadrant 1 because this quadrant is used to plot only positive numbers. Quadrants 2, 3, and 4 have negative numbers in them, but quadrant 1 is positive on the horizontal axis and positive on the vertical axis. So that's why that is quadrant 1, and then in a counterclockwise direction, 2, 3, and 4. When we plot points on a coordinate plane, we need to do things similarly to what we would do for plotting points on a number line. We want to show what scaling we'll use on this graph, which means how much does each of these boxes equal? Most of the time we'll use whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, but for some problems you might find that you'll need to use numbers in the hundreds or thousands, so it will be important to show the scaling that you're using. The scaling does not need to be the same on the x-axis as it is on the y-axis, so we'll need to represent what scaling we're using for the vertical axis also. We'll keep it the same, one box equals one unit. Now all these other lines back here with all these other boxes are here just because I'm using graph paper. The coordinate plane is just made up of a horizontal and a vertical axis, and these other boxes are here to make it easier for us to plot points. And when we are plotting points, we are plotting two numbers at the same time. Instead of just picking a number on the horizontal axis or a number on the vertical axis, we'll place a point that represents a number on each axis. The way that we can represent that we're plotting a point that represents two numbers would be as an ordered pair, two separate numbers inside a set of parentheses separated by a comma, like 2, 3, or negative 1, 5, or 0, 8, these are considered ordered pairs. Two numbers and the order matters, so that if we're talking about 0, 8, we do not want to think that it is the same as 8, 0. Same with all of these other ordered pairs. The order matters. The way we plot these points is suggested by how I wrote my ordered pair right here, x, y. The first number is plotted on the x-axis, the second number is plotted on the y-axis, but it's done in a very useful way. To plot the point 2, 3, we would not want to find 2 on the x-axis and 3 on the y-axis. That's not the best way we could do it. If I find 2 on the x-axis and 3 on the y-axis, there is a point right here that can represent both of those values at the same time. This point represents both actions moving two units to the right on the horizontal axis and three units up on the vertical axis. So do both of those moves and then plot the point. And this point, 
as long as we know our ordered pairs that the first number represent horizontal, the second number represents vertical, we'll be able to identify points by where they are on the coordinate plane. For example, what would this point up here be? We always want to start right here in the middle, and in fact we call that point the origin, and we move horizontally first and vertically second. Move on the horizontal axis, the x-axis first, and then vertically on the y-axis second. So this point we would get to by starting at the origin. Horizontally we need to go to the left one unit, so that's negative one, and then we are going up one, two, three, four, five units. Up there's five on the vertical axis. So this point represents the ordered pair, negative one, five. From the origin, the first number is our horizontal movement. Negative number, we need to go left. And then the second number is the vertical movement. It's positive, so we're going up to positive five, and there is the point. A point like 0, 8 means starting at the origin, we would move horizontally 0 units, not at all. The x-coordinate, the horizontal coordinate, is 0, so we don't move on the horizontal axis at all. We go right to the vertical coordinate, 8, and we go up 8 for a positive 8, and we would plot a point right on the vertical axis, because the x-coordinate, the horizontal coordinate, was 0. Compare that to this ordered pair, 8, 0. From the origin, the first coordinate, horizontal, is 8. So we need to move to the right to positive 8. But the vertical coordinate is 0. So we're not moving up at all. And we are plotting a point right here on the horizontal axis. So let's go through a few examples of plotting points that you can try. And then we'll check out the answers together. OK, here's the massive problem for you to pause the video and try. There are six ordered pairs for you to plot and five points that need the ordered pair identified. So there are, it's not matching them up. It's six different ordered pairs to plot, which are different from these points. What you need to do with these points is figure out what ordered pair the point represents. So pause the video to try this one. Now restart, and we'll go through the answers together. Let's identify these points first. Starting right here, from the origin, we would not go to the side left or right, so the x-coordinate must be 0. Vertically, we need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it is at the ordered pair 0, 5. Our next point, thinking first horizontally, from the origin to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the x-coordinate is 5, and then up 1, 2, 3, the point 5, 3. Next, from the origin again to the right, so a positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now this time we need to go down vertically 3 units. That means the vertical coordinate is negative 3. Now to this point in quadrant 3, from the origin, horizontally always first, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our x-coordinate is a negative 7 because we've gone left 7 units. And now down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 also. The ordered pair, negative 7, negative 7. Lastly, what about this point right in the middle at our origin? It also has an ordered pair. It's definitely where we start when we think about where ordered pairs are plotted. But it also corresponds to the ordered pair 0, 0. Starting from the origin, if we go no units left or right and no units up or down, we'd plot a point right at the origin. So it's ordered pair 0, 0. Now let's clear out those labels so we have room to plot these six ordered pairs. First, the point 3, 7. From the origin, 3 units horizontally and 7 units vertically. There's the point 3, 7. We don't need to label points every single time that we plot them, but for now we'll label. Next, negative 2, negative 9 horizontally always first, and the negative 2 means move to the left, 1, 2, and negative 9 means down 9 units, 1, 2, 3. Next point, 0, negative 3. From the origin, horizontally, 0, so next vertically, negative 3, down 3. Next, negative 7, 0. This time the horizontal coordinate, negative 7, vertically, it's a 0, 
So we're staying right here on the x, the horizontal axis. On to negative 8, 1. So back 8, and then up 1. We need to squeeze it in right there. And lastly, 9, negative 5. From the origin, horizontally positive 9. And then negative 5, down 5. So we've got a good idea now about how we can plot these points and the importance of ordered pairs and how we use positive and negative numbers. But the system is probably something you're used to already. It's pretty common to see this on maps. If we wanted to look up a city, we would see some coordinates. It's usually something like a number and a letter, but it corresponds to some place horizontally and some place vertically. And it's very useful for many things in mathematics.